It's the Daily Doug. Hey, y'all. Welcome back to the Daily Doug. Thanks for being with me today. You have arrived on a Monday. It is the beginning of a new week, which means it is a metal Monday. But today we're making it a Metallica Monday. So it's an extra special day for sure. And, you know, uh, my team and I, we, we do this uh, every week. We, we go through and we, we look at our calendars and we're like, what do we have up? You know, what are we doing? You know, how long has it been since we did this band or this band? And, and you know, what's, what's everything look like? And then one of the folks were like, uh, yeah, we should get back to some more Metallica. I'm like, great. So we're looking at Metallica and what songs we've done and what songs we haven't. And then Megan's like, have you not done Fade to Black? And... I was like, I, I don't know. It doesn't sound very familiar. And they're, they're typing in, you know, Doug Helvering, Fade to Black. No, we haven't done Fade to Black. So guess what? That's what we're up to today, friends. And I'm happy that you are with me. So Fade to Black is from Ride the Lightning, which was Metallica's second album released back in 1984. Uh, from this album, I have previously heard For Whom the Bell Tolls. That was episode 374 and The Call of Cthulhu in episode 237. Uh, as I read in about this album, it was recorded in Denmark in pretty short order in about three weeks. And with this album, the band began to explore uh, beyond their firm rooting in thrash metal. And uh, in doing so, they're making use of slower tempos. Uh, they are including extended instrumental sections uh, of pieces. They are including more complex harmonies. And uh, they are including acoustic instruments. And in the title of the album, as I read in, it's, again, it's called Ride the Lightning. It's inspired by a portion of Stephen King's novel, The Stand, which, uh, you know, one of the characters in that novel refers to electrocution by electric chair as riding the lightning and that's what you get on the on, on the cover art for the album as well so with this song specifically fade to black is regarded as the first ballad that the band ever released and its lyrics y'all are quite dark so james hetfield wrote the lyrics after someone broke into their gear truck uh, while the band was in boston and uh, it resulted in the stealing, the taking of one of James's favorite Marshall amplifiers, which happened to be one that his mother had helped him to get before she passed away. And the lyrics in this reveal someone who uh, I think is dealing with depression and who is contemplating suicide, y'all. And it almost reads like a suicide note. So just I want to make that clear. We're dealing with some, some heavy themes lyrically in this song. Uh, the song itself has become a fixture in the band's live uh, performances, even to this day. And there's many videos that I have found on YouTube of the band performing this live. But I'm going to go with the original studio recording this time, and I'm going to listen to the remastered version that was released back in 2016. So we've got uh, James Hetfield on uh, the vocals, rhythm guitar, and acoustic guitar. Kirk Hammett is on lead guitar. Cliff Burton is on the bass, and Lars Ulrich is on the drums. Let's take a listen to Fade to Black by Metallica. Off we go. I have a recollection of hearing this, but I've never really listened to it. Dum, that sounds like B minor down to A. Dum, bum, bum. Lead on top, acoustic on the bottom. Already nuanced, right? on the move. Where are they? Check that out. That was slick, y'all. New key. A 
A minor, to C, down to G, E minor. Lovely progression now in A minor. They started out in B minor, so they moved down a key. structure in the melody. Chord structure is consistent. Nice! The same A. And they do go to the C like they did. Back to A. Sometimes it's the high five, sometimes it's the low five. And then back into this lovely combination of acoustic and electric at the same time. Deathly lost, this can't be real, cannot stand this hell I feel. I wonder if he's grieving for his mom or for somebody who's passed, or for himself. I was me, but now he's gone. We get the chug in a little bit, and back to this. It's great phrasing, really. They do this part, and they end up there. Go back to it, so you remember it. You'll remember this riff. Bow to bow, and then they go down to there. Okay. stayed in E. How about that? They landed on that five. And now that's the one. Down to D. Changing the key allows him to get to a different part of his register vocally. Double time. Down my step. Down my other step. They went to that five, so they went to B from E. To A. Back to B minor. The key that they started in. So they started in B minor. Don't, don't talk over this. Double kick, but it's just under the surface, just kind of pushing us forward. Getting 
bigger and bigger and bigger, right? It's just one to flat seven to flat six, back to flat seven, back to one as they finish it up. Like I was saying, they started in this B minor and then they moved down to A, then they moved to E, and then they moved back down to B. It kind of were, once they moved down to A, they were moving by descending fourths. How about that? Yeah, I think that I have heard that in the dark recesses of my brain, but I've never paid attention to it, nor did I realize that it's in all those different keys. Wow, a classic track uh, by, by Metallica. This song, y'all, as I was reading it, I found a lot of information about this song. I want to share a little bit with you. It was released during a time when there were a lot of activists, specifically conservative activists, that were seeking to censor uh, the lyrics in the music of many popular artists. And this song's dark subject matter uh, added fuel to this, I think, already burning fire. So the, the response that the band got to this song was both supportive and antagonistic. And from what I read, each was quite fervent. Uh, there were some that accused uh, the song of influencing people to, to hurt themselves, to commit suicide. Uh, there were other people who spoke up to say that the song saved their life. And that's interesting to me that there's, there's those sorts of dichotomies in how people reacted to the song. But, um, I don't know. One of the biggest things that I've learned the last few years while um, I've been trying to help myself and make myself better through therapy is that uh, speaking a thought or, uh, or a feeling really does help us to, uh, to quantify it, to make it uh, palpable, to make it real, and it also helps us to let it go, right? So this song gives us time to, uh, to emote with the band. It, um, it's a safe environment. And, um, you know, once we're done with the song, we can let those feelings go and move on. Um, I don't see this song as glorifying the idea of suicide at all. Uh, rather, I see it as almost a healthy way of processing these feelings. It's art, y'all. It's a song. It's not political speech. It's not, you know, getting up on the rafters and saying, this is what you should do. Follow me, you know, uh, uh, you're, you're a leader. It's not that at all. It's artists trying to figure out how they feel and how to deal with it, right? Uh, Lars has said that at the time that they were writing the songs for the album, that he and James were kind of obsessed with the idea of death, with mortality. And it makes sense to me that songs like Fade to Black come from that place of, of human emotion, especially as younger people, younger adults contemplating mortality. Um, and all of that being said, they presented these ideas in their first ever ballad, which takes uh, a lot of courage, I think, as well. It was a big step for them musically as well as Lyrically, I mean, remember, they are still an emerging band, even with this, their second album. It was initially released on independent labels, both in the U.S. and in Europe. And <clears throat> after selling most of the initial run of the album, Electra Records picked them up. And, uh, you know, fast forward so many years later, the album is now certified uh, six times platinum. So uh, they were growing as people, as artists, they were gelling as a band, they were improving their skills, and uh, they were talking about what's really on their mind. And it's been helpful for millions and millions of people. I was looking at the, uh, 
at the versions of this that are online. Each one of these, uh, these different live versions of this that are online and a couple different uh, versions of the original studio recording, each have millions upon millions of views. So over the years, this has been a song that has really uh, touched people and connected the band with their fans. And it continues to be a very popular one for them to play uh, in their <clears throat> in their uh, live performances. And, um, you know, good for them. Good for them. Uh, they're really putting their, their feet forward here in their second album. And the sky's the limit for this band. So a wonderful way to get us started this week. It's a it's a, a, a difficult and, and dark um, you know, subject matter, but it's empowering at the same time, right? That's what metal music, I think, does. It's what I was missing uh, all those years that I wasn't really paying attention, that I have learned as I've been doing the Daily Doug. It helps. It's it's really a way to emote these ideas in a um, in a in an intense way, right? And then you can breathe a little bit easier and keep rocking out, right? So this has been uh, really fascinating for me to get into. Fade to Black from Metallica from their second album, Ride the Lightning. I very much appreciate you being with me, y'all. We will see you next time on another edition of The Daily Doug.